Good morning, everyone. I ever, have not ever had an introduction <laughs> quite like that one, and I can guarantee you I will never live it down with my children. So uh, good morning, welcome. It's really great to see all of you. There are a lot of uh, familiar faces here, so welcome, as well as some new ones, and we hope you enjoy the day. Um, we look forward to this event each and every year, and what we have in store for you today is really quite special. So look around the room. You've probably noticed a few changes if you've been here before. And you might be asking yourself, am I in the right place? Is this the stodgy US Chamber of Commerce? Let me assure you, yes, you are. Here's the deal. We decided to take what we believe is the nation's premier discussion on civil justice reform and spice it up. It's everything you love in a whole new package. We've incorporated videos, TED Talk style speakers, with some really unique presentations that we hope you will find fascinating. And all of this, of course, comes with our usual great set of panelists and new research. Our theme today is a liability odyssey, and we aim to give you a peek into the brave new world of litigation at warp speed. Everything this morning is going to move quickly. My hope is that this year's summit will at least begin to frame for you two key things. First, where we sit today in the midst of a rapidly changing litigation landscape. And second, where will we be in five or 10 years? We know that this is not an easy task. If you watch the Fox documentary series on the cosmos, you'll recall that they flew host Neil deGrasse Tyson on a computer-generated spaceship to get perspective on the enormity of the universe. Don't worry, I'm not gonna fly around the summit today in a computer-generated spaceship because while we've gotten advanced, not quite that far. But we do wanna give you a big picture, wide-angle lens tour of litigation today. Because, to quote Donald Trump, this landscape is simply huge. Thank you, you got it. Uh, but look, this is not breaking news, right? Last month, when Apple introduced the newest version of the iPhone, one business commentator said, people today have three basic needs, food, shelter, and technology. Think about that. Technology is now a basic human need. I think that's true. Technology is now how everyone in the modern economy and in the even not so modern economies does virtually everything. A recent study found that in just a few years, 90% of the world's population over the age of six, six, will have a mobile phone. In fact, more people today have access to mobile phones than to working toilets. Yes, that is true, you heard that right. A UN study showed that out of the world's estimated seven billion people, six billion have access to mobile phones. Only four and a half billion have access to working toilets. So the digital world is accessible to just about everyone. Consider this. In 1994, there were fewer than 3,000 websites. Today, there are more than one billion. But let's face it, websites really are so 10 minutes ago. It, today, it's the app with more than one and a half million apps to choose from. And for every website, every app, every piece of data, every e-transaction, there are litigation threats that didn't exist even a few years ago. In some cases, 
maybe even not a few months ago. So that's why this year's summit is going to be viewed figuratively from space, whether that's outer space, cyberspace, or inner space. So speaking of space, I want you to take a look at the screen. This is a real-time global map of every cyber attack happening on the planet right now. It's pretty amazing. Fascinating, sobering, scary. This impacts every person, every company, every organization represented in this room today. But again, sadly, this point probably is not surprising to most of us here, but it is jarring to see the big picture, to me, in real time. We spent a lot of time looking at this upstairs. Uh, so we're going to talk quite a bit today, obviously, about data privacy. What will these cases look like? What does the future of regulation look like? Who should do it? What are the limits of your liability on data your companies control? And so on. Of course, cyberspace does bring opportunities for you to understand and connect with your customers and your markets like never before. But it also brings opportunities for our friends in the plaintiff's bar to reach out and market to their customers like never before. Now take a look at this recent screenshot. This is a collection of tweets from one of the more prolific Twitter feeds from one uh, spewing out information on asbestos lawsuits. This is just in the last 24 hours. Every single day, on average, there are more than 3,000 tweets like this from more than 850 Twitter accounts talking about something related to asbestos or mesothelioma. These messages are either soliciting litigation, advancing the overall cause of lawsuits, and they reach an audience of three and a half million people each and every day. Of course, we really don't need cyberspace, right, to know what's happening on our good old-fashioned television sets. We've all seen ads like these before. The plaintiff's firm of Jacoby and Myers is credited with running the very first plaintiff's television ad in the United States after the Supreme Court ruled the practice permissible in 1972. As you all know, we've come a real long way since then. These ads are practically back to back on every television in the United States today. If you go to Florida, nonstop. Later, you're going to hear more about this topic when we unveil the results of our latest trial lawyer advertising study. It's really cool. I hope you stay for this. We're also going to explore where class actions are headed, how our regulators are going rogue on us, and whether commercialization of lawsuits is fact or fiction. You know, just a couple of years before that first TV ad aired, Alvin Toffler wrote a landmark book called Future Shock, examining how people react to rapid change in a really short period of time. Toffler's thesis was that rapid change had a disorienting or paralyzing effect on people. My hope is that by the end of today, each of you will have discovered something that will help you and your company avoid future shock. Our goal is to help you think about how you will shape your own litigation strategy for the future, because as we all know, 
The plaintiff's bar is not slowing down. We won't either, so let's get to it. Thank you all for being here and enjoy the ride today.